Hello everyone, I am Neil Trindade, I'm a physics professor at Federal Institute of São Paulo. Uh, and this research is a collaboration with University of São Paulo, the Federal University of São Paulo, and the Clemson University in ESA. My topic is Alexandrite development of a natural radiation detector. The purpose of this presentation is to show my study in Alexandrite. Alexandrite is a green variety of chrysoberyl with the incorporation of chromium in its lattice. Brazil has the world's largest deposit of alexandrite, and this gem has a great economic and technological importance. Chrysoberyl is found uh, mainly in this region in Brazil. Now, let's look at the structure uh, of alexandrite in, in figure 3. Uh, the alexandrite unicell uh, can be visualized as approximately hexagonal closed package. The combination of the chromium doping and the chrysoberyl matrix leads to very favorable properties. In the synthetic form, uh, it's used as laser with proper, uh, properties superior to other lasers. It is used in a treatment of cancers of the mouth, spots on the face, removal of tattoos and hair, among other applications. Also, alexandrite has a photochromatic effect that can be explained by relative presence of chromium in both aluminium positions. On this slide, you can see numerous references about natural minerals for dosimetry, for example, nuclear acid and dosimetry, food radiation control, and the luminescence dating. Among them, quartz, calcite, feldspar, and fluoride well known radiation detectors, and we have expectations that alexandrite can also be used as a dosimeter. And why alexandrite? First, for you to understand better, I need to talk about the luminescent techniques and dosimetry. Well, uh, luminescence techniques have been applied to a wide range of dosimetry studies by thermoluminescence, TL, and the optically stimulated luminescence, OSL. As you can see in the figure, in terms of the band model, in regular solids, the states alloyed for the most energetic electrons of the material are still in bands, separated by regions of prohibited energy for the electrons. The low energy bands are called the valency band, and the higher energy bands are called the conduction band. Now in this, when the electron in the valency band absorb energy larger than the gap, results in an ionizing of electrons that are promoted to conduction band as well as holes in the valency band. Because of the imperfections in the crystalline layers or the presence of impurities, some materials present metastable energy states, also called the traps, in the forbidden band. After this, a certain percentage of released charge carriers will be trapped by defects, and there is a certain probability that charge carriers will escape these traps upon receiving thermal or optical stimulation that will recombine with the role and then generate the luminescence. Therefore, thermal luminescence is the light emitted by some materials upon heating after exposure to ionizing radiation besides incandescence, and OSL is similar to L, but in this case, luminescence is stimulated by absorption of optical energy instead of the thermal energy. Well, according to the previous slide, when the TL or SL signal is proportional to absorbed dose, the material in question can be studied as a dosimeter. Therefore, those metric materials are used for determination of the radiation dose received in the environment as well as in medical and technological activities. Synthetic dosimeters have the advantage of the control synthesis and precise chemical composition, thus present high levels of reproducibility. However, natural dosimeters find application, as I said before, for example, uh, in retrospective dosimetry and maybe a lower cost alternative to synthetic ones. An ideal dosimeter is expected to have the following characteristics. Good sensitivity, portable, resistant, low cost, keep the signal, it's a fading, and finally, 
no relationship between radiation exposure time and the luminescence signal, preferable linear. Now, why Alexandrite? My answer, the motivations are, first, there are no publications on this, and second, the fact that chrysoberyl contains about 20% by weight of barium oxide and 80% by weight of aluminium oxide. Buff crystals are the most used commercially as a TL and the OSL dosimeters. Okay, about the methodology, the conditions for TL and the OSL measures were TL glow curves were performed using a reaching rate of 1 Kelvin per second from room temperature to 500 Kelvin. The TL and the OSL signal was detected with a fault multiplier tube behind the UV transmitting glass filter and a 5 mm diameter mask. OSL measurements were carried out at room temperature using the same equipment. The OSL signal was stimulated in CW mode using blue LEDs. Radiation was executed at room temperature using beta source of the TRS OSL reader. The dose rate was 10 mg per second. Let's talk about the results now. Uh, the results are published in these recent papers, Brazilian Journal of Radiation Science and in Journal of Luminescence. Well, the Alessandro samples using this work come from the state of Bahia, Brazil. In the preparation of samples, first, a thermal treatment was carried out to a maximum temperature of 400 degrees Celsius in a muffled furnace, and alexandrite was kept at the, the temperature for one hour so that the effect uh, of environmental radiation was removed. As it is a natural sample, in order to obtain more homogeneous results in thermal nascent measurements, it was decided to fragment alexandrite to a granulation less than 0.35 mm. To perform the thermal luminescence measurements, the powder was separated uh, into seven samples so that everyone had a similar mass in each experiment. Background measurements were first taken, uh, that is, heating without prior radiation. As you can see in the figure A, five TL glow peaks were observed in Alexandrite. In addition, temperature positions of each peak were independent of the beta dose seen then set in figure A. Thus corroborating that all the TL glow peaks presented a first order kinetic TL mechanism. We observed that the signal uh, increased with the intensity of the dose used, so a linear adjustment shown in figure B uh, was performed from the integral of the each peak obtained uh, by GlowFit software. The coefficient of determination was very close to 1, uh, therefore there is a strong correlation between the TL signal and the radiation dose. In another batch of measures for the purpose of dosimetric applications, the analysis was made at the most intense and stable peaks called the 4 and 5. The parameters ana analyzed uh, in the TL glow curves were linearity, repeatability, and fading. Well, as can be seen in our first result, the samples were radiated with a beta dose ranging from 0.5 to 5 grays. Then, in the dose response experiment, it is possible to observe that TL glow curves show an increase in the total area as the dose increase. For details of the emission curve as well as check the kinetic order, the TMT stop method was performed. Uh, in the first figure, the TMT stop showed that peak 4 temperature position was 535 Kelvin, and for peak 5, it was 590 Kelvin. The star case shape observed in the figure is consistent with the model that describes glow peaks containing separate thermal luminescence peaks, that is, the first order kinetic mechanism. From that, the curve was deconvolved, the second figure is an example, uh, in the, which was observed that the figure of merit parameter had a good adjustment below 5%. 
The activation energy and the frequency factor for each peak are also obtained by GlowFit software. In the table, you can see the mean value and the start deviation of the data obtained. So the intervals of each peak are also analyzed as a function of the radiation dose is shown in the figure. Uh, in addition, the linear adjacent data are shown in the table. Uh, figures show that TL signal has a linear relationship with the dose of beta radiation. Observed by the coefficient of determination is very close to 1 for both peaks. This factor shows that the linear response in the range of the 0.5 gray to 5 gray is satisfactory, which means one of the desired qualities for the application of the material in the area of the dosimetry. Well, uh, from the areas of ETL peak, a statistical repeatability analysis was performed, resulting in the constitution of the graph presented on the slide. Also, next to the figure, there is a table containing the analysis of these results as the mean, the standard deviation, and the coefficient of variation between the measures. In the repeatability experiment, uh, it's possible to observe that the peaks had a value approximately constant regardless of the number of measurements. The results in the table demonstrate a low value for the coefficient of variation for the peaks. Therefore, it's concluded that TL glow curves are reproducible uh, for measurements uh, performed under the same conditions. Finally, for TL measures, uh, the fading experiment was carried out with a storage time at a room temperature of uh, 0 minutes, 2 days, and 33 days, shiny figure. For the radiations, a beta dose of 5 grays was used. Uh, you can see in the table uh, as the far fading of TL signal that the PIX4 and 5 had a more relevant decay only for the period of uh, 33 days. Uh, even so, the fading was below 10% of the signal initial and very close to the variations obtained by repeatability. Therefore, the results of repeatability and fading indicate that in general the PIX4 and 5 maintain and reproduce the luminescent signal, a desirable property for a dosimetric material. Now I'm going to start uh, talking about OSL measures. Uh, you will find the next results in this recent paper uh, published in, in Journal of Luminescence. Well, uh, in this case, the same preparation was the same as before but the powder from the alexandrite mineral was incorporated into a fluorinated polymer in preparating form of pellets. A mixture with 20% weight of the alexandrite in the pellet had the luminescence behavior evaluating as a function of exposure to ionizing radiation using the optically stimulated luminescence OSL technique. The OSL measurements were evaluated in terms of dose response, better dose from 0.1 to 5 grays, uh, repeatability, reproducibility, and fading. In the second figure, we have a visual aspect of the samples. In this figure, we have the select OSL decay curves, as I said before, varying the radiation dose from 0.1 to 5 grays. Each decay curve corresponds to the average of the decay curves of three pellets irradiated to the same dose. All the key curves show the same shape, regardless of the radiation dose. As you can see, in our case, about 20 seconds of illumination here uh, were enough to extinguish the signal. Uh, this figure illustrates an example of fitting for the OSL decay curve obtained after 3 grays of a better radiation dose. The dots represent the experimental results, and the red line is the sum of all components. Uh, the inset is a semi logarithmic scale representation for better visualization. Uh, in this example, the exponential curve can be characterized as three decay components fast blue curve, medium black curve, and the slow green curve. Note that the sum of components red curve is very close to the experimental results. Importantly, for all the radiation dose between 1 and 5 grays, uh, three exponential decay components were necessary to obtain 
fittings with a correlation coefficient close to 1. In the dose response experiment, uh, you can see this figure the average of the SL signal of the three samples as a function of the radiation dose. Also showing this linear best fit, uh, the best fitting procedure, yeah, the linear coefficient shown on the slide with a square coefficient of determination uh, equal to 0 0.99. Therefore, there is a strong correlation between the SL signal and the radiation dose. Uh, in dosimetry, a linear dose response relationship is a highly desired outcome since it's a criterion to whether or not to investigate a material as a dosimeter. That is, in, as in TL, we have a good result in OSL. In order to test the repeatability of the OSL signal, a sequence measurement was carried out using a same pellet. The OSL signal was found to be repeatable when we measure it under the same conditions, as the CV value, about 2%, was obtained. In terms of reproducibility of the OSL signal in the 5 pellet batch, a CV about 8% was obtained. The optically opaque nature of the binder suggests the origin of the OSL signal is limited to the surface of the pellets, and thus it is strongly affected by concentration uh, of minerals, particles on the surface. With this result, he concluded that the use of these composite dosimeters is possible, but a pre-evaluation of each pellet would be required a better precision of dose determination. And future work will focus on obtaining more homogeneous batches of composite pellets. About fading, the reduction of the cell signal of the sample was investigated for storage periods of 1 hour, 5 days, and 30 days. The OSL signal fades up to 4% of the initial intensity value in the first hour at room temperature and the under dark conditions. In the next 5 days, the signal decreases by another 20%. The results after 30 days of storage show no additional fading, uh, with the signal being stable at 4% of the original value. In summary, OSL intensity signal from the pellets varies linearly with the radiation dose between 0.1 and 5 grays, and keeps 40% of luminescence signal stable after 30 days of storage in the dark. The repeatability and the reproducibility results show a low coefficient of variation. About thermal luminescence, this work focuses on the peaks 4 and 5 uh, because they are more intense and stable. The peaks of alexandrite follow the first order kinetic. Uh, alexandrite show a good linearity in TL signal of the buff peaks as a function of those, with determination coefficient close to 1. Good repeatability for measurements was also verified, and the same peaks also had a less than 10% fading uh, in the 33 days storage period. In general, the TL and the cell results show the sum of desirable characteristics of dosimetric materials, suggesting that alexandride has a potential for application in this area as a TL detector, especially in high dose, as well as pellet as an OSL detector, especially in low dose. I'd like to thank uh, Dardengo here and Cavalcanti here, they are undergraduate students. Uh, Lima is graduate student and Professor Yoshimura here, uh, Kunzel here, and Jacobson. Thank you so much. And I also need to thank FAPESP and my institution for their financial support. Uh, if you have any question that you would you like to ask me, I am leaving my email here. Thank you.